There we go. Great. Please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, that I will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Each vote at this meeting will be taken by roll call vote. I'm always grateful that we can meet online, but not so happy that we have to do that. Okay. Um, uh, um. The first item on our agenda is to, hi, Vanessa, you can hear us? Yes. Great, okay. Uh, we'll approve the agenda and then we were gonna approve minutes from June 7th, but because we received them today, I'm gonna hold that till uh, next um, our next meeting so we have time to review them in detail. And so we'll move on to um, our presentation from uh, government Performance Solutions, and they are performing the behavioral health assessment on behalf of a group of um, organizations on Nantucket. And I'd love to introduce Greg and Laura, whoever's going to go first, and just let you take it away. Thank you, Brooke. Just uh, one confirmation. How many minutes are you anticipating for both the presentation and q and I think... Uh, uh, I would say probably we can give you about a half hour total if we need it, yep. All right. We will try to get our part done in between 10 and 15 minutes. That'll allow time for uh, conversation. Great. Right. Everyone, my name is Greg Belomo. I'm coming to you from Denver, Colorado. My partner, Laura Sigrist and I are two fifths of Government Performance Solutions. Our partner, uh, Nancy Vandemark is also on this engagement. And we have been asked by, as Brooke said, a number of leaders uh, on the island to conduct a behavioral health assessment. Despite best efforts, in some cases, heroic efforts, uh, the system is, is not well integrated and not consistently meeting the needs of the community, but where to start. So it's a topic that has been discussed for a number of years and we've been asked to provide a comprehensive assessment. <clears throat> what we're hoping to do with you all today is to recap our approach and the progress that we've made and share our initial findings. As I mentioned, we'll try to do that in between 10 and 15 minutes and we'll stop with the findings and that'll be a good spot for uh, any Q&A or dialogue. <clears throat> We're in the first phase of what is envisioned to be a two-phase process. Between now and the end of the summer, figure September, we are doing our best to engage all different members of the community and gather the data and the perspectives that allow us to produce an, uh, a report of the assets, gaps, issues, and opportunities. So we are, are doing that through a number of ways. I'll share that in a moment, but that is intended to inform phase two, in which we'll use those findings to chart the course forward, okay? And how we envision that is for all the gaps we might have, we need to agree upon a set of common sense initiatives that will go ahead and close those gaps and then for every initiative, we need to understand which strategies will be employed and the uh, five and 10 year funding requirements in order to execute that plan. Okay. So the output of that second phase would be the roadmap that can be followed uh, and the funding requirements necessary to do so. Here's our timeline. Uh, we began back in April and assembled the steering committee in, in May. We did some interviews, got our hands on some existing analyses. We're now in, in July and we're holding community focus groups. In fact, we have our second one tomorrow night. 
We have a provider and user surveys, both out on the street. Those are in uh, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. We're doing research and benchmarking, connecting as best we can with folks who've already been helping, and then gathering data from the organizations who are delivering service on the island. <clears throat> We're also doing some frontline workshops saying, hey, look, this is what we think we heard. Is it right? Do we have the gaps and, uh, correct? And what do you think we can do about them? As I mentioned on the slide before, we don't intend to uh, chart the course forward in this phase. However, most folks are solution-minded. And so if you ask them what's wrong, you ought to take a few minutes to ask them what they think we can do about it as well. Okay. Uh, anticipated uh, timeline for completion by the end of September. Uh, we're, we've actually just begun synthesizing our findings and trying to read things back to folks and see if they uh, understand or said differently, if we've captured accurately what it is that we've been told and whether we can substantiate the things that, that we're going to say in our assessment. Okay. In terms of who's engaged, we have 15 decision makers, I'll call them system shapers as our steering committee. Okay. We've got four project leads. These are, uh, so it's Michael Kellerman from Fairwinds, Jackie from NAMI, Chris Glowacki from the hospital and Margareta from the Community Foundation. We've got a group of about 30 advisors who are front row, you know, uh, data reps, operational leaders, providers, people who are doing the do. And then we're also providing a number of opportunities for other stakeholders to engage and offer their perspective. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to my partner, Laura. She's gonna tell you a little bit about what the steering committee told us, what we've been doing and what we've been hearing. Thanks, Greg. So as Greg mentioned, we did spend quite a lot of time um, interviewing each of the steering committee members and others and really asked them the question, we kind of asked them the magic wand question. What's the night? What's an ideal behavioral health system? What does it look like for the island of Nantucket? And here's what we heard. And we're using this information to help um, help the group uh, shape and, and think about uh, what the future might look like. So the six key themes here were really oriented around accessibility. So not just um, in terms of physical access, um, but hours, um, affordable cost, those kinds of things. Um, comprehensive services, so understanding you know, what can we offer on the island versus what has to be offered off island? What can we bring onto the island? How can we bolster that and make it um, as easy as possible for our community members who need services and support to get them here at home. Mm -hmm. um, understanding how important a closed loop system really is. So getting the providers connected and organizations connected with each other, getting those warm handoffs, those referrals, really tightly uh, connected in a way that's effective for the community. And then understanding, really understanding any kind of stigma that, stigma that might currently exist and how we can address that in the future, how we can um, open up the world of behavioral health to communities and populations that might not otherwise feel comfortable seeking it. And then of course, understanding um, how we can create a no wrong door uh, approach. So if I, if I walk into say Fairwinds, but that's not the right service. Maybe I'm, I'm in crisis. They know how to send me to somewhere else. Or if I walk into um, the school with concern for my high schooler, um, they know who to send me to support for. So really understanding how, again, to connect those providers, connect the organizations with a really comprehensive knowledge base and resource uh, list. And then understanding um, how important it is overall to address all of these things that the overall system of behavioral health for Nantucket is truly a welcoming system so that the providers, the facilities, they reflect the community that's being served. Um, they connect with the community being served. Um, and that's an ongoing living commitment to, to a value um, in the system itself. Any questions about those themes that we heard there? that sort of forward looking vision. Okay, so if you could go to the next slide, please, Greg. Um, what have we actually um, been doing? How we've been sort of sorting things through? Uh, we think about things, we tend to think about things uh, along the behavioral health continuum in sort of four, four buckets. And there are different schools of thought about the continuum of care, but this is how we have approached it. And we have uh, worked with our advisor and our steering committee to tackle things into these categories. So looking of course at prevention, intervention, treatment, all the way through to recovery, um, and then really underpinning that continuum with high quality data provision, evaluation, 
research, best practices, and then also that collaboration, that value of collaboration, that value of connectedness across the continuum um, and that whole person care really connecting with, uh, with the mind and the body as well. And we use that as an organizing construct to think about um, the gaps that we've heard about so far. So Greg, if you go to the next slide, please. So um, as Greg mentioned, we have um, been doing a fair bit of listening and the numbers on this page will jump up in a couple of days, really actually will be well over a hundred folks here pretty soon. Um, we've been listening very carefully about the specific uh, needs and the specific resources available on Nantucket and they've shared, folks have been very open um, and candid in sharing their insights on specific gaps, specific opportunities, um, helping us identify what data is available to help us understand the size and scale. How many calls are coming into crisis? How many people are coming into the emergency room? How many calls are going through dispatch the police department for folks with a behavioral health need? Those kinds of things. And so we've been uh, keeping a, a matrix uh, together to sort of keep that in summary. And there's a lot of information there. We'd be happy to share that with you. You can get in there and poke around and read but it might be easier for me to just kind of share with you what we've heard so far. We've distilled that down at the first pass into really eight key themes. Um, and within those themes, we're really diving into the details with those small groups of advisors that Greg, Greg mentioned, those frontline folks who are doing the do. Here are the eight themes that we're really tackling so far. First of all, an understanding around the crisis and emergency services you know, are they adequate? Are they um, available? Are they accessible? Are they really an open system um, to given the actual crisis needs of the Nantucket community itself? So focusing on crisis. Second one is understanding the outpatient treatment system. And again, knowing what's available on island, what's available off island, where are folks having to go to get the services they need? Uh, what's the provider capacity? Um, for, uh, for the range of needs, as well as the range of patients, pediatric patients, geriatric patients, and everybody in between. Understanding the recovery support services as well. So we heard quite a lot about um, folks who are receiving services off island, coming back home and, and maybe finding themselves with a gap here in, in what kind of recovery supports are available, how to get folks reintegrated into um, the community, how to make sure they have an ongoing recovery plan, how to make sure they've got an ongoing support system and specific treatments um, after they've received an initial round of treatment or intervention. Number four, they're understanding um, this system of collaboration. This has come up time and time again, where you know, very well-intentioned, um, you know, committed, dedicated professionals either run into real system barriers, for example, you know, no universal release of information or an inability to share data across system barriers or access information all the way through to um, providers who might be providing maybe duplicative services, but maybe in cross purposes with each other or not aware of each other. So this idea of really bolstering that collaboration um, has, has been a, a key theme. Understanding exactly what kind of prevention and outreach, and then we put education in this bucket as well. What's really happening? What topics are being covered? Um, is it sort of, uh, are the prevention and outreach efforts, are they sort of coming along with the current needs, you know, so sort of today's needs, are they updated with today's needs for the community? And, uh, and what, what, kinds of, what kinds of specific things are we looking for that might not be currently available in the way of prevention? Number six really gets at that stigma idea around stigma. Um, we have heard from a number of folks who, who are feeling a little bit discouraged by the response of the system or maybe have sat on a wait list for a while or feeling frustrated and not getting the answers to support they need or feeling that, that real barrier to care. Um, so really wanting to understand deeply how, um, how we can understand that, how we can size that and what specific needs folks are identifying, uh, what kind of opportunities could be available to really address um, that, that comfort level and that we want to you know, create that open system of behavioral health. We know, and, um, and Brooke is keeping us schooled very well on the ideas around um, the connection between you know, workforce recruitment retention 
and housing affordability. So it's number seven and eight. We know that if we've got a capacity issue, for example, in the provider base, it's so directly linked to how can we get folks on the island? How can we keep them on the island? How can we house them on the island? And what are all of the considerations around that? So there are lots of ideas around how to say bolster provider capacity, but sometimes there are other barriers in the way that might prohibit us from actually getting them to stay. Um, you know, there's lots of experience with different ex like experiments and trials with different things that have happened on Nantucket so far. So where we go from here, and then I'll pause for, for a moment. I've been talking a long time at you. Um, where we go from here is we're hosting um, small teams of that advisor community to help us really dive much deeper into, into these each one of these eight themes, kind of pick apart what we mean when we say, um, you know, is, it, is this really... We, we've got a challenge around crisis. Well, yes, but in, you know, in these four specific ways, for example, or the process for um, how we are collaborating across providers you know, might be bolstered by these three things. So really getting into that next layer of detail around that. Um, and we are always on the hunt for data collection. We're always pursuing, some of you have been the recipients of our questions in the data space. So uh, many thanks to your, your willingness to help us there. And as Greg mentioned, the other thing that we are pushing right now to get to make sure we're getting a more comprehensive perspective on these themes is that community survey. So both the provider survey, but also the community survey. Um, and, and one thing that we might, we, we wanna pause here and get questions from you, but one question I'll kind of put out to this group is thinking around how we can continue to promote that survey. We know it's been published in some of the media. I know it went out in the town newsletter. We've got some folks kind of with their fingers and in the community kind of getting it out there, but we'd really welcome um, your ideas and input around how we can reach even more deeply into the community to make sure we're getting as many voices as possible uh, especially those populations that we might not typically hear from in the ways that we're engaging on a Zoom meeting or, or things like that. So let me pause there. That was a lot of information. Greg and I are happy to answer questions. And then we've got a couple questions for you as well. So let me pause. What can we answer for you? Great. Thank you, Laura. I think what I'm going to do is just ask each board member because I'm seeing not everybody um, simultaneously with the screen share. So Sue, did you want to um, comment or ask any questions? Okay, um, uh, Vanessa, did you have any questions or comments? Yeah. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, Laura and Greg, thank you so much for this um, beautiful explanation. Um, so I'm very happy to see, you know, how our, our community, you know, is so engaged in order to promote better surf system in our island and, and, to, and to like make that happen. It's a lot of work. So the first of all, it's, it's exactly what you guys are doing, like to promote this kind of survey so that you can, so the community, you know, the community authorities can understand what's going on. So one of the, you know, the all that points, Laura, that you have shared, they are so like, like, um, so precise. And, but what caught my attention is number six. So among, for example, I, I'm not sure if I've shared with somebody here in an informal talk, and I, I'm not sure, but anyways, um, number six, I can tell you, um, I like I'm I work very closely to the immigrant community on on island, and I hear many stories, um, and I have stories too, like experience that I also have. So I also had sorry. Um, so I can tell you that number six. It's very, very unfortunately, but very common in the immigrant community. So I, I've been doing um, like trying to get as many voices as possible, uh, but I think that I have to work more, you know? So in order, I don't know how many Brazilians or Portuguese speakers have answered the, you know, that survey, but uh, I will, for sure work more 
you know, in order to um, to get as many voices as possible, because, you know, and to make them understand why it's important to them to answer, you know, that survey. And then uh, Greg answered this question. So I don't need to ask because he, he answered. So that's exactly what I'm going to tell them. So I just want to say, uh, you know, through our chair and thank you so much for this beautiful work. And, uh, one, and one more thing, in order to get like um, the immigrant community uh, voices, uh, I can tell you guys that um, if you guys do only during summertime, it's gonna be very hard because they work a lot. Everybody works a lot. I know, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, they like work day and like all day long when they get at, at, you know, before they go, they get home, they have to pick up kids. And so they don't like, I don't have the time to answer surveys, things like that. So they usually have a little bit more time in some uh, during fall and winter, just to you know to let you guys know. Uh, but I'm not saying that they are not going to answer during uh, summertime. Okay, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm gonna uh, work hard in order to you know to make them aware of the importance of the survey. So uh, just one more time, thank you so much. And you, you guys can count on me if I can help in something. Please let me know. Thanks, thank Vanessa. You. And Jocelyn, did you want to share anything or ask any questions? I echo what Vanessa said. Um, this all looks great. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. Great. Um, and Athlin, did you want to? Athlin Sweeney's here. Athlin, just for, for Greg and Laura's uh, clarification, Athlin was, is, has been a board member with us and is between being reappointed in the next round. So she's technically a member of the public today. So did you wanna share anything? Just that I'm so happy you guys are doing this. Um, this has been um, a long time coming, I think where it's just focused on behavioral health in the community. So I think it's amazing that this is getting done. Um, and so thank you guys so much for your role in this and um, being persistent with people to get the information back because it is a hard time of year. I think um, Vanessa is correct for everyone. It's a hard time of year. And I think for the immigrant population, they're working often two and three jobs just to get through the summer. So um, thank you so much. Okay. Um, and Laura, you had indicated you had some questions for us, maybe, and so. Yeah, Greg, you want to go to the next slide? Oh, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, uh, Brooke, um, through go ahead. Uh, my question is, uh, Laura, and when this survey is gonna is gonna um, gonna end it? When's gonna be the last day to do the survey? Do you know, do you have the date? That's a great question, Brooke, may I answer? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, we actually have not put an end date on it yet, although I know it, we were hoping to, to get that wrapped up here probably in the next, Greg, what week or two, is that about? I think by, so? the end of, by the end of July is a good yeah. target. I will tell you that we have 133 survey respondents to the English survey. So whatever channels we use there have worked. Um, and, you know, with a sample size like that, you know, you're relatively comfortable that you've gotten a good swath of the community. We have three responses to the Portuguese and zero responses to the Spanish. Something is not working there. Our channels aren't right. So if we need to leave it open a little bit longer for you all to, um, to help us get connected to those communities, we will do that. But we also know that, you know, that time ticks. So we'd like to um, request the support that Vanessa, you offered from, uh, from each of you. We can send you the three links. We've also got the survey uh, in a PDF format in case someone wishes to complete it on paper. 
and the Community Foundation has agreed to be the, uh, the group to collect those. Um, but we are not going to close this thing until we have made uh, a, a complete effort to get a representative response from the community. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I, uh, if you guys could resend me an email with the, the three links, and then I can forward it through um, Jericho and Ann to the entire board so that everybody yeah. has it in their inbox. Okay, yeah. great. It looks like Athlin would like to ask another question. Thank you for pointing that out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, may I ask Vanessa a quick question? Through, yes, that's fine. Yep. Okay. Um, Vanessa, are there any, through the churches, are there any um, like uh, newsletters that get sent out through the churches in the summertime? Well, um, as far as I know, there are no newsletters, but um, what we could do is that maybe they be in touch with the leaders and ask them to post on their um, Facebook page or maybe even on their personal Facebook page, which is much better, I can tell you, because there are like, you know, what happened like in some Facebook uh church pages there are so many people that maybe the ones that we are want to target won't be able to see it but maybe if we be I think that's a good question Ethelene. thank you I think that that's where we we can do is like being in touch with them and ask them to post on their pages or something or even uh during their final you know uh, service maybe they could do a final announcement you know during the announcement a quick announcement and say about the importance of you know, to answer this survey. I just know that that's a place people stay connected to regardless. Mm -hmm. So just thought that maybe that would be a way we could reach the immigrant population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, I'm not sure about the Hispanic churches. What I know, there is just one Brazilian um, uh, gospel church on Nantucket. They don't have any newsletters. Okay. Yeah, but thank Great. you. Uh, Sue? So <clears throat> I had put the links for the surveys on the year round page right at the beginning. And then I, I'm sending it out through the UU church and through ASAP NAMI. But I'm wondering if we printed copies, could those go into um, the Spanish speaking mass or um, that might the physical copies in with the church bulletin might be a way to go at st mary's yeah at least for that one i don't i mean there's so many different congregations around i don't know who serves which community yeah yeah jocelyn i was thinking as well um i don't know if this would have to go through the superintendent but with eileen taveras who we have at the high school um, she usually will push out messages to all our Spanish speaking parents. So that might be a good way to get that out there as well. And she also has a Facebook page for all our um, Spanish speaking parents. So that could also be another way. And yes, I would love to get an email with all of that because I could send it to my mom and she can share it at her church. Fantastic. We will go ahead Great. and send the links, but also the, uh, the three files so that those could be distributed. Um, and could I ask a uh, clarifier? Did you say Eileen Taveras? Was yes. The name? Okay. Um, Deb Gately is one of our advisors and Deb has agreed to uh, you know, help push out to the, uh, to the school community, um, but I'm gonna follow up with her specifically and ask her to, uh, to send it to Eileen for her to push along in any way that she sees fit that'll help us get uh, connected to that group. You all okay with that? Yeah, and I have another name um, of someone who worked with the English language learner program and she's recently left, but she left me a contact person as, um, through the schools. So there's a there's several distribution lists, I think, through the schools. Jocelyn knows better than anyone because she she's, works at the schools. Um, but is that the LPAC, Jocelyn, that you were thinking of? Yes, um, 
but like I said, I don't know if it all has to go through the, sorry, my dogs are going crazy right now. Um, I don't know if it's something that has to go through the superintendent, but like I said, I lean because we use Aspen and on Aspen, we have every parent's information, email and everything. So that is something that maybe Eileen would be able to do. She can literally click all the parents that speak Spanish and she can push that out. Okay, now, great. I'm not sure with, with um, the recent L director moving on, there's a new one. I'm not sure how um, up to date she is with LPAC. I don't think LPAC even runs in the summer, um, but I'm sure, and I don't know who the LPAC president is or was this past year, but maybe that's something Eileen knows. And through her, you could also push it out because I remember um, the LPAC president had like a WhatsApp group or some sort of group with all the parents. So she could also help with uh, pushing that out. Okay, great. Thanks, Jocelyn. I suppose this goes without saying, but our approach on this so far has just been push, 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 push. We're not trying to be like surgical and only, you know, uh, the way that I think it's been said is we'd rather have somebody get it three times and say, oh, for heaven's sakes, rather than to miss folks. So any and all, I believe, will be effective, um, uh, an effective strategy. That's great. So I will make note of all of these and reconfirm. Yes, Vanessa. Uh, and just uh, um, what Jocelyn has just said. So I'm part of the OPEC. I'm the vice president and the president is um, Maria. I think Maria Rivera. So I can talk, I, we have the WhatsApp group. So I can, I am gonna talk to her. We are not running in the summer. So we are gonna come back in September. So I, but I, uh, I can be in touch with her. And then with them, because we have the secretary too, who is Hispanic too. So we can you know, work something out. Okay, great, excellent. Okay, Greg, I'll make sure you have everybody's contact information to follow up on all these threads. Thank you, much yep. appreciated. And we will, uh, as I mentioned, we'll get those links and the files to you immediately so that you can include it in any subsequent communications. Okay, terrific. Um, any final comments or questions from our presenters or board? I'm not, Jocelyn, I'm assuming your hand is up from before. Yes, I don't know how to. Um, yep. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right, great. Um, well, I want to say thank you to both of you for um, joining us this evening, and um, we will stay in touch. And uh, Greg, I'll be talking to you on Friday and um, all things housing. And if you guys want to sign off, you don't need to stay on with us. You're welcome to stay. Everyone always is. But um, I know time is, time is short in everyone's corners of the world these days. So Appreciate thank you that. again. And, and thank you, board, for, for your attention and for your help in, in pushing things along. I'll also include our little presentation here if you want to forward that to anybody. There's no, we have nothing that we have is confidential and nothing that we have is terribly sensitive. We want people to be talking like this. Inside that are our contact details. Um, and you should feel free at any point in time to reach out to us if you have a brainstorm. Um, we're probably like you. We, we work all the time and when something strikes, make use of it. Thanks everybody. Okay. Thanks everybody. Sure. Take care. Take care you guys. Okay, so um, on to item six on our agenda, which is um, our the, the, the beginnings of our school bullying initiative. And when we met last, we had decided to go out and each do a little research and contact into the systems of, um, of responding to bullying in the schools and in the community and um, to offer whatever we've learned to help us sort of identify a path for how we might uh, move forward with this to collaborate across um, with the schools on um, working towards something on this. So uh, does anyone have, any members of the board have anything they'd like to share tonight? Vanessa? 
Brooke, I would like to have a little bit more time so to gather information. So, but I'm wondering if I I can send you by mail yes. those information once I got all of them. At least you know a few. Is yep. that okay? You, yep, you can you can send them um, to me, and then and I can send them to Anne, and they can be put together in a packet for when this comes up on our agenda next. So okay, yep. awesome. Thank you. Yep. Pardon and me. Then, I think I'm, I'm sorry, I think it should be directly to Anne and then outward if I'm- Oh, that's, that, that's true, yes, correct. And then if all possible, yep. I would love a copy of whatever you have, Vanessa. Yeah, so sure. to Anne and Jericho first. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. Um, and then, um, <laughs> that's fine. Um, and Athlon, I know, um, um, as a member of the community, you've had some conversations. Did you have anything you wanted to share with us? Sure, thank you. Um, I had a chance to talk with Pauline Proach, and I think she did two things for me. One, she talked about the any families that anybody worked with, she was asking questions, and she would do this as a school committee board member as well is find out what they have done thus far. Have they gone to somebody at the school? In other words, follow the protocols of the school system. She said that's just imperative as part of what people need to do. Um, she also sent, and I sent it along to you, Brooke, um, the website um, that gives information specifically about what um, bullying is what they consider bullying that the school follows that they have to follow did you see that email i i don't recall getting it so okay. um let's... i can share it right now actually i have it with me um if you give me just a second yep oh. Or if you want to send it along to Anne, and then we can we can compile it with um, everything else that I can do that. Great. Okay. Terrific. Um, and Jocelyn, have you had any um, have you had any conversations or anything that you'd like to share? No, not really. Okay. Fair enough. It's a tough time of year. Um, summer's challenging um, for all of us. Everyone's really busy. So um, I uh, had reached out to um, a Superintendent Hallett and she had given me Mike Horton's name as a contact person uh, within the school system, school administration. He and I were not able to connect yet um, based on his schedule and my schedule. So that's sort of the 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 direction that I'd gone in terms of learn being on the learning curve of what it what is the system in the schools and how does it work? So um, it seems to me that the, 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 the question we need to ask ourselves as a board and we can we can talk about this a little more is um, where we go um, uh, from here in terms of defining what what role we might play in this conversation? Do we want to, what, what would we bring to the table of such a conversation? And I think the thing that stuck out in my mind um, when this topic was originally raised with us is that there, that, that um, uh, I think it was Claudia expressed some concern that folks were not comfortable with the protocols and the system within the school, that there was some discomfort with um, raising a hand into that system. And so um, if, if I remember that correctly, so um, that might be an, an opportunity that we have to, to um, maybe help the system understand where things don't work for people in the in the community. So um, Sue, you unmuted, did you wanna? Yeah, I think you just said what I was sort of trying to wrap my head around is that I, I believe when the meeting, that last meeting that was held, 
um, as a member of the public, I was there. And I, I think that's what we were trying to accomplish. Like, we know the schools have protocols. We aren't sure what they are, but we there's a strong feeling that there are community members who don't feel safe in what, like you said, raising your hand or going to a teacher, that there are students that are think that will draw more attention to them perhaps, and they're not comfortable. So yeah, if there's a way we can help, I, I'm a, I'd like to assume that the school knows that that happens, but at the same time, like, are they restricted in what they can do? So I'd love to understand more about, yeah, if there are kids falling through that crack, how do we stop it? Yeah. So my instinct is that we pursue maybe inviting members of the school committee and the school administration, the appropriate members to, to help us learn about the system as it exists and maybe provide them some feedback that we might be getting um, from the community or from folks that we're in, in contact with. Does that seem like a reasonable direction to go for this topic for us? Uh, Brooke, Vanessa? Yeah, I think it can help. It can help. But I'm thinking here, uh, we will be able to change their protocols. So like, I, I totally agree with, you know, what has been said, like people don't really feel comfortable about what's going on because I think they see um, like a sort of impediment because of, you know, the school, you know, way how to deal with certain situations. They don't really feel comfortable. So my question is, I don't know if, we, I think we won't be able to change the protocols, but my question is how can we help to at least, I don't know, how can we help uh, those students or those families that are facing uh, like bullying, or, you know, this kind of situation, how they, you know, when they, when they have a, a, a very, um, you know, a strict protocol, how can we work with these families? So maybe I think it can help if, we, if you invite Brooke so that we can understand more and maybe uh, find ways um, how those people can be, you know, directed inside the, the school system. Okay. Yeah, I mean, are, may I, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, Sue. <laughs> um, are there cultural competencies that we could help bridge the gap or, um, yeah, or just, I don't know. There's gotta be some room in education to further educate, whether it's the families or the educators on how to, you know, achieve the same mission together. Yeah, so uh, I think that that the one of the roles of this council is as an intermediary between existing systems and the community. That's, that's my, um, feeling that that's an important, uh, could be a, an important component of our work, regardless of what topic we're talking about. Um, and, you know, that's the behavioral health assessment, you know, all of it. It's, it is, it is, this is a group that meets and invites the public in to share their, exp their experience of living on Nantucket as relates to this general idea of human services. And so where we can provide a communication um, route for the public at, from a different angle to some of the existing systems, I think is a valuable role for us to play. And so I wanna try to think about what we do here in those terms. So for me personally, this is an area I know nothing about because I don't have kids in school. Um, I haven't had kids in the public schools here ever. And so I would love the opportunity to learn what the system is and then to provide some feedback to those folks and then maybe find some areas of collaboration for changing if, it's, if there's room for amending, changing, improving those systems. 
can we help them hear from the folks the system isn't meeting their needs? So does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so, so does it seem to be um, make sense for us to try to uh, schedule uh, a meeting? Our next scheduled meeting is August 2nd. I I'm kind of feeling a little summer pressure um, and I'm wondering whether um, we, we meet in August or whether we give these folks till um, September, which is gonna be right at the beginning of the school year, which is not gonna be great timing either. Um, so, I mean, we, we do have the August meeting standing. So um, assuming we'll have a, a quorum for that meeting, we could see if, if they can come in August, it might actually work better. Um, for their for their schedule administration working over the summer when the kids aren't in the building. Um, so, uh, Jocelyn, what day in August is it? It's it's Monday, August second. Yeah, that's probably good because I know that last week before school starts, we all go back to school and we're all doing professional development. And September is busy, so I think the August um, day is would be good. Okay. Okay, great. So what we will do is get on that and um, reach out to, I think Pauline is chair of the school committee and, um, and Mike Horton, who's the contact administration that I've gotten and um, invite them to come to the August meeting to, to uh, with, with the idea that they would explain to us what the system is and how it works. And uh, we could ask them questions and, and it would be a learning opportunity for us more than us providing any feedback to them at that point. So does that make sense? And that will give us more time to um, gather more uh, input for them at a future time. So, okay, great. So we can plan on that for August. Um, is there any other, uh, oh no, next is update from the Director of Human Services on vaccine clinics and timeline for appointments to, to our open seats. Uh, hello everybody. Um, I'll keep the vaccine stuff uh, relatively brief. Um, we are running two clinics weekly uh, at the school administration building on First Way. Uh, one is on Thursday and that's from 4.30 to 6.30. The one is on Sunday and that's from 12 to 2. Uh, both will run for the duration of July and most likely will run into August, both as a two-day a week um, continuing schedule. Um, we're basically going to look at our average numbers for the past month or so. And as soon as that come, uh, starts to drop between our uh, drop below half of our total theoretical throughput, we'll drop down to one just so we can have first and second doses without uh, clogging the traffic lines. Uh, it's a drive-through clinic. Um, or walk through. Uh, there's no reporting requirements. There's no uh, ID requirements. Um, we have Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer, and we can do juvenile vaccinations. Um, anyone who knows somebody who wants a vaccine that hasn't gotten one um, can direct them there, uh, and we usually will be able to help uh, basically everyone. Um, additionally, we've had quite a few people come through recently who were vaccinated with their first dose outside of the U.S. and either got something like Sinovac or AstraZeneca. We've just received new guidance from the CDC that allows us to vaccinate either to finish a vaccination cycle for those people or to start a new vaccination cycle um, with a disease with a vaccine that has higher resistance to the um, variants. Um, we can always use volunteers there. I have a volunteer um, sign up form that Brooke was have, uh, thank, nice enough to point out to me. Um, we're looking for more language coverage as always. Um, the throughput of non-native English speakers is fairly high and there are definitely situations where I prefer to have a native speaker around. Um, we've had pretty good coverage of that uh, in previous clinics, but you know, summertime, everyone got too busy. Um, uh, so I'll stop for a second. If any questions or any concerns about the yes. vaccination process, go ahead. Derek, I'm wondering if you guys provide, um, you know, in interpretation through, um, how can I say, um, through Zoom or something like that as we a video do. conference. 
we do have remote uh, remote interpreting so that's the word that i was looking for <laughs> a we, remote we, uh, interpreting we do have a couple of services like that the town does not have contracts with them um but we 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 can explore that um i i always want to get local translators first if at all possible um because there's a lot of context dependent stuff um and then part of the issue with um the clinic is making sure everyone knows about it and local interpreters are the best way to get an English language message about the you know community um, that does not speak English regularly. Um, but we are looking into that. We would be able to, once the American Recovery Act funding gets released, we would be able to, to, to use that money to, to secure some sort of contract with tele, uh, sort of teletranslation or teleinterpreting. Um, definitely looking into it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because Jericho, I, I like me, for example, I, I, I wasn't able to um, go to any, um, that's why I hadn't, didn't have any commitment because I have two little kids. And so to me, it's complicated to go there, but it would be easier, for example, for me, if it would be uh, as a remote, um, you know, service. I mean, okay, so it's okay. I can understand like about budget. That's totally fine. I'm just saying like as a volunteer, so I can I can help. So we can work out Jericho. We can like absolutely. send email. We can see a time and you know. So I I to me is easier like that than doing like business hours like the regular ones. To me is impo is impossible. That's yeah, because no. of that. So my. Like my business hours when I do translations through the translator's house is, is at evenings. In the evenings, I'm sorry, at night. So I do that. So, but I can I can work out with you like sometime as a remote interpreting. Okay, we can work yeah, out. Absolutely. Um, what I might do is we have the sign up sheet. I'll share the sign up uh, genius link um, through Anne and then on to everybody else. Um, if we could honestly just have it. I have one language, assist, like language assistance category in there. We could just then during that time period, if we have somebody come in, just call you and see if that works. Yeah, and then like if we like set up a time, I can even like tell you know, uh, sp uh, um, spread the word to to the Brazilian community and say, hi guys, during that time, I'm available. If anyone like to you know get the vaccination, you need interpreting, I'll be there. So, you know, they will, you know, know. So, so yeah. okay. That, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, any other questions from anybody about vaccine? Okay. And then um, Jericho, help us remember the time uh, timeline for the seats. We, I, I understand we've had uh, three applicants I believe we have um, a, enough applicants to cover the open slot and then some. Um, those applications, I believe, are going to be all in and collected um, by middle of, by early August. And then I think the approval process is during August. And then the first meeting would be, I want to say September, but it might be October. I'm not October. It might be October. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the the process, as best I understand it, and I'm, this is one of the areas I should have should know a little better, um, is that the uh, the applications will be reviewed, then the membership will be added, and then from that point on, we will be up to a total of nine um, members, and then we will have a quorum of five at that point. Um, and then I think that's uh, by the first meeting after the so after the approval of the new members will be officially a nine person member and then moving forward from that that'll be a uh, standard operating procedure okay great so uh, a, um, do we a seven person board with six members at the moment yes but that's the one down that we are is because of is Athel, because of Athelin, i believe right um, yeah, and then, Athlon's intention was to reapply. And then so that the applicant, I don't, uh, Brooke, are you counting Athlon among those three applicants for the new positions? Uh, no, I think there's, I think there's three in addition. Yes, I think, yes. So Athlon and I think there's four applicants so far. 
okay. um, so, that I'm aware of. So for for three seats. At the end of at the end of August, we'll have we'll be adding technically three total members at the end of August and into the 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 next meeting cycle. Yep. Okay, great. Um, since we don't have any members of the public present, we won't have any public comment. Um, as we indicated, next uh, meeting is Monday, August 2nd at 7 p.m. And if there's nothing else from the board, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. I'll take a second. Okay, and by roll call vote, Vanessa? Yes. Okay, Sue? Aye. Jocelyn? Aye. And I vote aye, so we are officially adjourned. Thanks, everybody. And Thank you. I'll see you in a month, uh, nah, three weeks, because <laughs> we're a week late. <laughs> yeah. right, take it easy. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Ann. Thanks, Jericho.